other people to know because the I'm not good enough story comes up for a lot of my clients. And so when I'm teaching them to know their own self-worth, what's the first thing or the most important thing I can get them to do? The first and most important thing you can get them to do is not about them, it's about you. You got to know yours. I know. And it's a little tricky, you see, because here you are as a teacher, sort of wanting to be the boss of them a little bit. I know. <laughs> Just sort of wanting them to be the boss of you. I wrote this book. I wrote this book, and it's got really good stuff in it. And if you'll read it, your life will be better. <laughs> or you could just keep bumbling along in the limp, stupid way you've been living your life. We're exaggerating with you, and we're teasing you a little bit here, because we really want this to all be lighter. But that really is the answer. In other words, if you are wanting someone to know their self-worth, then, first of all, you have to be light, feeling light, which means you have to be under the influence of your broader perspective. And when you are, as you hold them as your object of attention, you'll see them in their greatest value. And that's the best thing that you can do for anyone, which means you have to have kind of brief conversations with them. Because if you let them talk, they'll explain to you things that will make you question really how worthy they are. <laughs> Or at least how wise they are. And so this is the way you want your sessions to go. I'm so glad to be with you. I see such value in you. And when they start to go, ah, 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 These could be very brief seminars, couldn't they? We're extremely pleased that you're here. Let's get the microphone just right. Do you have something to say to us? Ah, 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 ah. Unless you're sure someone's in sync with who they are, then don't be a sounding board for them. Don't encourage their practicing of their disconnection under your tutorage. Because no good ever comes from that. Because law of attraction just gets hold of it and more and more and more of it comes. And you hit it right on the head when you sat down. You know exactly the thing that matters most of all. You know, that is connection, it's alignment, it's understanding who one really is. And sometimes people are pretty far from it. And sometimes they do need some loving attention. And sometimes it takes a little while because a person cannot have been thinking the way they've been thinking for a long time and suddenly change what they're thinking right now. Now hear this, this is an important thing to focus on. All that matters is now. Your whole point of attraction is now. And your relationship between you, your human personality, and you, your non-physical wholeness, that's everything. That relationship to that, that's everything in terms of your worthiness and your beingness and your point of attraction. That's alignment or resistance. That really is everything. But often, people have practiced themselves out of any realization of that or out of any real recognition of that. So they're not really ready to hear all of that right here, right now. You just can't let them talk you out of it. That's the only rule of thumb. Don't let anybody in need talk you out of your recognition of who they are. And when you feel yourself starting to lose your grip on who they really are, then it's time for you to say, let's take a break. Helpful? Amazing. So you have a specific question. Yes. It's about deep wounds that we have, like triggers, because you're in alignment and then something throws you out of alignment. This is right where we just left, so it's appropriate that this is right where you would be. That's what we meant. So no deep wound has to matter here and now. Anyone could be under the influence of source energy. No deep wounds would exist. So the question is, how to get there. And the answer is, don't keep talking about the wounds. Because the more you talk about them, the deeper they get. You know, when that happened, in that moment that it happened, Jerry used to tell a story that if he was sitting in front of the fireplace in his pretty sweater, and the log in the fireplace had no screen, and the log, he talked about chinkapin logs, apparently they were pretty sparky logs, would spark. And if the spark would land on his sweater... If he would not notice it, 
it would burn a hole in his sweater pretty fast. But in the moment that it came, if he would flick it off, then nothing would happen. So it's like that. In the early stage of something, in the early stage of something, you could flick it off. Now, here, we really want you to hear this. There are a lot of things that have been burning holes in your sweaters for a long, 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 long time. And it's really too late to flick it off because it's been there. You've experienced the damage of it. But you're not still wearing the same sweater and you don't have to keep talking about it. And the conversation about it keeps renewing it. It keeps renewing it. It keeps dragging it forward into the now. The vibration of it and the vibrational memory of it. Let's put those words together just for fun for a little bit. The vibrational activation or the vibrational memory of it would have faded if you had not renewed it and 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 renewed it. And renewed it and renewed it and renewed it and renewed it and renewed it. It would go away. It would go away. It would lose its momentum. It's what you give your attention to that becomes active. A thought that you think, as you focus upon it, you activate vibrations within you that are the equivalency of that thought. And if you hold that attention upon that for as little as 16 seconds, I used to say 17, 16 seconds, another thought like it joins it. And the potential for the hole in the sweater is greater, or the wonderful whatever it is. And another 16, and then another 16, once you get in the 60-something second vicinity, now you've got something active enough that it is likely you'll pick it up again. But if you're utilizing your guidance and you realize that there are things all over the place, there is somebody chiseling something upstairs, and I can focus upon it in a way that detracts from my well-being or I can focus upon it in a way that it doesn't detract or I can ignore it altogether. Well, some things are kind of hard to ignore. And if something is hard to ignore, then you've got to find a way of focusing upon it that feels better to you little by little by little by little by little by little by little. If we could all just start fresh in this moment, if you could all be newly born right now and not have any of that vibrational memory of what went on before, law of attraction would only yield to you, stay with us, you're going to like this, law of attraction would only yield to you the things that you've been asking for that are in your vortex. So think about this, all through your life, you've been living life, having experiences, having unwanted experiences and choosing wanted experience. In other words, that choice has been happening within you and you have filled your vibrational reality with all wanted things. And your inner being stands vibrationally with all of those things as a vibrational match to all of those things, as an echo chamber of all of those things, witnessing the cooperative components because of law of attraction coming to all of those things because your vortex, unlike the world you live in, your vortex only allows because the influence of oh, 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 oh. you know what we said to you earlier about what you bring to the table what you bring to the table influences the outcome are you still with us what you bring to the table influences the outcome we want you to think about who is at the table in your vortex there are no naysayers there are no malintents it's only your inner being and the council of source energy and all things wanted, that is an influence of well-being. That's all that's there. And the cooperative components have been gathered. So think about the power of that influence. Think about the power of that influence and then ask yourself, what is your focus now? What's the most valuable focus that you could have now? The most valuable focus that you could have now is to allow yourself to be influenced by this. So now, play with this just for a little bit. So... Pretend that you just got here, that you don't remember any of the things that you lived that caused you to put the things in the vortex. But here it is. It's your vortex, and it's all things that you want, and it's all queued up for you, and it's ready to be delivered to you thought by thought, idea by idea, impulse by impulse, so that you could have the delicious experience, worthy being that you are, of allowing all of this good stuff to unfold in your life for the purpose of surprising and delighting you. That's exactly how it is. That's exactly how it is. And so then your logic says, but I can't be newly born today. 
I can't all of a sudden not remember some of that. And we go along with that. You can't all of a sudden not remember it. But you could give further, fuller attention to what's happening now. You could make choices that lean more this way now. You could begin orienting yourself in the direction of that now. But only if you make this decision. You gotta decide that it is right that you feel good. You gotta decide that it is right that you feel good. You've gotta decide that it is all right for you to feel good. And then you just gotta start paying attention to the stories that you tell that feel good and the stories that you tell that feel bad. And the stories that you tell that feel good and the stories that you tell that feel bad. And the things that you observe that feel good and the things that you observe that feel bad. And the people you hang around with that feel good and the people that you hang around with that don't feel so good. Just start making that distinction. And that's how you are, for all intents and purposes, born anew. Because this vortex will dominate. It really is who you are. So then you want to say, Abraham, what about this contrast that we were born into? And we say, you mean those choices? Oh, Choices sounds a little different to me than contrast. Those choices I was born into, yeah, the choices that you were born into. And we know it gets a little confusing. It was a little confusing. It's not so much now. We know that when something is happening in your experience, it's logical that it would get some of your attention. We're just asking you, if it doesn't feel good, can't you make a choice that feels better? And don't you really want to be new into this world? Don't you want to be this fresh vibrational atmosphere? Don't you want to start this day in a clearer place than you were before? Don't you like it that when you went to sleep last night, that the strong influence of your day subsided, that you are less influenced when you first wake up in the morning than you were at the end of the day yesterday? Don't you like knowing it? Don't you like knowing that the momentum slowed, it subsided while you slept? And don't you like knowing that as you're waking up, you are waking up into this atmosphere of love and appreciation that permeates all that you are? Don't you like that feeling of eagerness as you step into your day? And don't you want to do what you can do as best as you can do it to keep it going? Don't you want to greet the day with a happy heart? And don't you want to look for positive aspects? And don't you want to quiet your mind and allow the vibration of who you are to permeate the vibrational atmosphere around you? Don't you want to root for your own success? Don't you want to give yourself the best opportunity of beginning anew? Don't you want to, at least for a little while, be really in concert with your inner being? Aren't Aren't you just excited about the idea of quieting your mind and feeling the satisfaction of a thought coming into your mind that is pure positive energy? Don't you want that impulse of newness that is being offered to you? Don't you want to know just for a moment what your inner being knows about you? And then yes. You'll go back into your day, and you'll go back into your habits of thought, but they will be different than they were yesterday. And tomorrow they will be different than they are today, until it won't be long before you'll be waking up in the morning, and you will have this happy heart. You will know that you are new unto this world, and you will know that your vortex is filled with everything that you've sorted out of it. And you will know that you've got this universal backing, and you'll know that this dominant, powerful, pure positive energy is focused upon your behalf. And as you're doing that day after day after day, and then going out into your world as a sort of emissary of upliftment, you'll find it nearly impossible in time to find anything out there in the faces or the stories or the lives of those who you wish to uplift who will take you from that dominant knowing because this is who you are. This is the influence of who you are and you are receptive and ready to receive the full influence of that. And so are they. And they will benefit by those like you who have deliberately allowed yourself to become influenceable by this well-being, who have deliberately focused upon more and more things that feel good. But we're not trying to get you to fix a broken world. We just want you to be happy in this world. And we're not trying to get you to cause others to be happy in this world. We just want you to be happy in this world.